What is hell really? Is earth actually a place of punishment? Is our world hell? Greetings mortals, capital day to y'all. I'm your host Simon, welcome back to the library of Gnosis. The modern English word hell is derived from the old English hell, spelled with one L, and refers to a netherworld of the dead reaching into Anglo-Saxon pagan period. It comes from the Old Norse Hell, which in Norse mythology refers to both an underworld location and the goddess who rules there by the same name. All forms of the word ultimately derive from the reconstructed Proto-Germanic feminine noun Salo or Halyo, meaning concealed place or the underworld. Upon the Christianization of the Germanic peoples, Extension of Proto-Germanic Salyu were reinterpreted to denote the underworld in Christian mythology known as Gehenna. Gehenna or Gehennom, literally translated as Valley of Hinnom, is thought to be a small valley in Jerusalem. In the Hebrew Bible, Gehenna was initially where some of the kings of Judah sacrificed their children by fire. Thereafter, it was deemed to be cursed. Book of Jeremiah 7, 31, 9, 2, and 6. In rabbinic literature, Gehenna is also a destination of the wicked. Gehemminom is different from the more neutral Sheol or Hades, the abode of the dead. Although the King James Version of the Bible misleadingly translates both with the Anglo-Saxon word hell. Punishment in hell typically corresponds to the sins committed during life. Sometimes these distinctions are specific, with damned souls suffering for each sin committed. See for example, Plato's myth of Er. The story begins as a man named Er, son of Armenius of Pompilia, dies in battle. When the body of those who died in the battle are collected, ten days after his death, Ur remains undecomposed. Two days later, he revives on his funeral pyre and tells others of his journey in the afterlife, including an account of reincarnation and the celestial spheres of the astral plane. The tale includes the idea that moral people are rewarded and immoral people punished after death. The same can be seen in Dante's The Divine Comedy. In many religious cultures, including Christianity and Islam. Hell is often depicted as fiery, painful and harsh, inflicting suffering on the guilty. Despite these common depictions of hell as a place of fire, some other traditions portray hell as cold. Buddhist, and particularly Tibetan Buddhist, descriptions of hell feature an equal number of hot and cold hells. Among Christian descriptions, Dante's Inferno portrays the innermost or ninth circle of hell as a frozen lake of blood and guilt. Is our world really the Christian hell? The lake of fire appears in both ancient Egyptian and Christian religion as a place of after-death punishment of the wicked. The phrase is used in five versions of the book of Revelation. In the biblical context, the concept seems analogous to the Jewish Gehenna, or the more common concept of hell. What is a lake of fire exactly? The only so-called lake of fire I have ever seen out in the world is above or below us in the case of sundown, the sun itself. If you were to stand upon the surface of the sun, you would literally be in a lake of fire. At the same time, as you would look from the sun, all that you would see is the blackness of space. Look at Matthew 22, 13, where Jesus speaks of an unsaved man being cast into hell. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into the outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. A commonly accepted and traditional interpretation is that the lake of fire and the second death are symbolic of eternal pain, pain of loss and perhaps pain of the senses, as punishment for wickedness. 
However, the Greek words translated torment or tormented in English comes from the Greek root word basanos, with the original meaning of the testing of gold and silver as a medium of exchange by a proving stone. Jewish philosophers and mystics emphasized the spiritual character of the future life, interpreting Gehenna as a redemptive fire which burns away the soul's impurities in order to restore its original perfection. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like a fuller's soap. Malachi 3.2 a spiritualized conception of the soul's journey after death flourished alongside rabbinic doctrine of resurrection and judgment at the end of time, and the two models were often combined. The focus of traditional Jewish eschatology, now as in past, is on the messianic age, when the world will be remade into a dwelling place fit for the divine presence. To forfeit one's share in the world to come is the greatest of all calamities to which hellfire, whether physical or spiritual, pales in comparison, as in Matthew. If your hand or your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it from you. It is better for you to enter life crippled or lame, than to have two hands or two feet and be cast into the eternal fire. Matthew 18.8 Gnosticism also adopts the belief that our material world is some kind of hell, a world full of punishment. But instead of hell being a place where the wicked are punished, it is where the fallen soul of Sophia becomes trapped in matter, representing the human soul. So what do you think, mortal? Are we wrong about what hell is? Is our world really a place of punishment? Or perhaps of purification? Leave it down in the comment section below. Thank you for listening. See you next time, mortal. Remember to hit that bell button to stay notified. Subscribe for more red pill content. Do give it a like if you enjoyed it, and feel free to share it. If you want to support my work, you can find me on Patreon at Library of Gnosis. You can find me on YouTube. Facebook, and BitChute at Library of Noses. The audio versions of my broadcasts are available on Spotify as a podcast at Library of Noses. Music is produced by Coda.